Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. It must have been a wild scene in downtown Fostoria back in May of 1934, when the calm of a nice spring day was shattered by gunfire at the First National Bank. A career as a gangster and bank robber could be quite lucrative in the Depression era, and nobody was better at it or more notorious than John Dillinger. Was it Dillinger himself, along with one other man, who robbed First National of $17,000? A huge sum in those days. Everyone involved was convinced it was, and indeed the evidence seemed to point to the infamous bad guy. It was nearly closing time when the pair burst into the bank with machine guns and began terrorizing the occupants. Police soon arrived, and a true cops and robbers gun battle ensued. The bandits grabbed two bank employees, forced them into their car to use as human shields, and raced off. When the bullets stopped flying, Fostoria Police Chief Frank Culp was critically hurt with a shot to his lung. Another patrolman was shot in the foot. A cashier was shot in the back, and a customer got hit in the shoulder. The robbers sped out of Fostoria, north towards Toledo, and released their two hostages unharmed just two miles out of town. Judging from the descriptions of the pair, federal agents were convinced that Dillinger, in constant need of money to finance his life of crime on the road, had struck again. Law enforcement mobilized what news accounts at the time called literally thousands of peace officers to stretch a veritable wall of armed men along the Indiana state line to intercept Dillinger if he was headed back to Chicago. But he slipped through the dragnet and lived to rob another day. The legend of John Dillinger as one of America's most notorious and dangerous criminals lives to this day. He was accused of robbing dozens of banks and had little regard for human life, if taking it preserved his own. Even so, the financial difficulties that afflicted most Americans during the Depression made Dillinger something of a cult hero, a Robin Hood of sorts, a crook with a colorful personality who loved publicity. It was an image enhanced by his elusive nature. He was imprisoned on several occasions, but escaped twice. Dillinger's life on the run finally ended just two months after the Fostoria robbery, in July 1934, when federal agents gunned him down outside the Biograph Movie Theater in Chicago. Times have changed, of course. Today, Dillinger would be arrested, charged, and presumably convicted. But in 1934, law enforcement's patience had run out, and due process was not a concern. His death, by the way, came just two months after the violent demise of two other notorious criminals, Bonnie and Clyde. They were gunned down in their car by agents. In their case, putting an end to their national crime spree was regarded by authorities as more important than reading Bonnie and Clyde or John Dillinger their rights. Nobody had yet heard of a guy named Ernesto Arturo Miranda. The concept of Miranda rights didn't come along until 1966. But for one day in 1934, John Dillinger gave Fostoria a day it would never forget. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.